In this video, we're going to talk about a relatively simple topic known as percent yield, which is simply a way of quantifying the amount of product you are able to produce versus the amount of product your reaction should have ideally produced, and then representing that as a percentage. Let's start with a quick overview of what's going to be happening. Uh, we'll start with a definition of what percent yield actually is. Uh, we'll then move into the mathematics that goes along with it. And finally, we'll wrap up with an example. This should hopefully be a much shorter video than some of the other ones you've seen. Down below, before we dive into this, uh, all percentages, regardless of whether it's a percentage on a test or a percentage in chemistry class, always work the same way. We take the piece of the puzzle that we're interested in, we divide that by the whole amount, and we multiply it by 100. If this were a test, you take the score you got on top, divide it by the score you should have gotten, ideally on the bottom, 100 gets you the percentage you got on the score. All percentages work the same way, including percent yield that we're going to talk about today. So we'll start with the definition then of what percent actual of yield actually is. And we're going to back up into some older ideas first. Uh, the first of which being conservation of matter can predict for us the outcome of a chemical reaction via the process of stoichiometry, which is we've been working on for the last couple of days. And what stoichiometry predicts for us is the ideal, and we're going to focus on this word ideal, amount of product formed in a chemical reaction, assuming every single molecule reacts the way it's supposed to, and assuming that all the product is collected and weighed on the balance. So stoichiometry predicts the perfect outcome of the experiment. And maybe we can write that over here. The perfect outcome. Best possible scenario. And there's actually a word that we use to describe this outcome that we haven't used yet, and that is known as the theoretical yield. In theory, we should be able to make the, this amount of product, whatever our stoichiometry predicts for us. Realistically, the real world involves things like air, it involves uh, chemicals that don't necessarily react with one another. So the real chemical reaction, and that's the difference here, the ideal versus the real chemical reaction typically produces less product and let's point out something else we cannot at any given point of time make more product that's actually a conservation of matter issue uh, we can talk about that more in class there's a lot of reasons your real chemical reaction might produce less uh, inefficiencies of the reaction itself. Uh, this diagram over here is showing that. Uh, for example, if molecules simply aren't moving fast enough, they might not collide together with enough energy to cause a reaction to occur. And then maybe certain chemicals are very selective about the angles at which they collide with one another to make these reactions occur. And as a result, the wrong angles happening uh, can prevent a reaction. You can imagine the more of these limitations a particular reaction has, the less likely it's going to produce products. So those are the inefficiencies. The less product could be for measurement or performance error, i.e. your measuring devices or what you actually do in the experiment, or simply just loss of product via either mistakes uh, or via the actual nature of the reaction itself. And I think we saw some of that in the magnesium oxide lab we recently performed. So now that we've identified this ideal situation versus the real situation, we can talk about what percent yield is all about. Percent yield is the fraction of the ideal amount of product, which again comes from our stoichiometry, uh, that you're able to produce and actually collect while really performing the chemical reaction. And this is the real part of things. When you really do the reaction, you weigh the product that you make, and we're going to compare that back to the ideal. This ratio of, of real to ideal is represented as a percentage, which is why we call it percent yield, or a percent of the ideal outcome. And it can be used as a reflection of lab technique or error, meaning this is something we can discuss during lab reports. It can also be a reflection of the efficiency of the reaction itself, meaning that even if you are perfect in the actual experiment, you still might not get a yield of 100%. Some reactions are just a little bit stubborn about proceeding to product, and as a result, they always produce less than 100% yield, regardless of how careful you actually are. So the good news, here's the equation we use to calculate percent yield. It's actually relatively simple, just like any percentage calculation. Uh, it's the actual yield divided by the theoretical times 100 to make it a percent. The actual yield information is either given to you by me in the form of a problem, or it is measured during the actual lab process itself. You've completed your reaction, you've measured the quantity of product, that is your actual yield. The theoretical yield is the ideal outcome, and as we've already talked about a couple times, this is the product of stoichiometry. The stoichiometry will tell you what the theoretical yield actually is. 
So we're towards the end already. Uh, let's talk about the application of this using a very simple problem. Uh, on the screen here right now, I've got a regular old, old stoichiometry problem. I think it's probably in your best interest just for practice to take a moment to you do the stoichiometry problem. And notice I'm now using our new terminology here. Uh, I'm not asking you to tell me how many grams are formed, but instead to tell me what the theoretical yield uh, of the element vanadium is in this chemical reaction. Nothing's different mathematically. We're just using our new vocab. Pause the video, take a moment, try this problem. We'll talk about how this later on turns into a percent composition exercise when we go to the next slide. So just regular stoichiometry for now. So here's the solution for the balanced chemical reaction shown up above, as well as the stoichiometry down below. I'm not going to spend a huge amount of time talking about this, other than to identify the fact that the theoretical yield of this reaction will give us 10.38 grams of the element vanadium. Now, what we haven't talked about yet is how this translates into a percent yield type problem. So this would be the second part of a stoichiometry problem that involves percent yield. After performing the reaction, you are able to actually collect 8.76 grams as opposed to the 10 grams we should have collected. Your job will be then to calculate the percent yield of the reaction. Well, to calculate the percent yield, we need the theoretical and actual yield. We've got our actual yield right here. The theoretical yield, again, comes from our stoichiometry calculation. I'll put it up on the screen here again so we remember this. This is our theoretical yield. We remember that our equation for percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical. We can take our actual yield data of 8.76 divided by the theoretical yield, what we should have gotten, the 10.38, and we found out that this reaction was able to produce 84.4% of the amount of product it should have ideally made. We have an 84.4% yield. And that's pretty much it. Uh, the great news is the math never gets more complicated than that. Um, so at this stage in the game, you should be able to calculate the percent yield of a reaction from theoretical yield data coming from your stoichiometry, as well as the results from the experiment itself. Uh, I either have to give these to you if it were like a test or a practice problem, or you'd actually measure this value yourself if you were performing a lab. The reason we bring this up now is it's something you can apply as always to your lab we just worked on, the stoichiometry lab. You can now calculate the percent yield of your magnesium oxide based on the stoichiometry predicting the ideal amount of magnesium oxide and the amount of magnesium oxide that you were actually able to produce when you measured that from the lab.